The year pretty much came to an end after our spring concert success. Much to my surprise, I hadn't yet been run out of town on a rail. It sure felt good not to move my family to another city after only one year on the job. Looking forward to the future, I wondered if the college president's words would prove prophetic. Precisely how would I top what we had accomplished this first year? After all, in a two-year community college setting, you don't get to build a program for more than a year before at least half of your band leaves for the big leagues. What would next year hold? More to the point, who would next year hold? In the midst of my contemplation, the summer passed with the pleasure of never-ending bicycle rides with Cass, each of us toting a child strapped into a rear seat. Every day found us at the community swimming pool or riding through the town parks to enjoy a picnic lunch together. Perhaps the only financial advantage of the teaching profession is that you can elect to receive your salary over a 12-month pay cycle, even though you may be only in the classroom for nine of those months. Of course, the salary isn't very good, but during the summer it feels like it is. As June turns into July and July into August, I hear a song brewing here. A teacher begins to feel the pull of revitalization. Thoughts of the new school year are as beckoning as they are nerve-wracking. Labor Day is the time to retool not only your office, but also your mind. Family bike rides are grudgingly replaced by the planning for new students. New arrangements, new rehearsals, and new concerts. Who would the new students be? Could I count on the same level of natural talent as last year? Would any of last year's ensemble members be back this year? Or had they all moved on to greener pastures? The first college-wide faculty meeting focused on many ridiculous things, but one new development stood out for its innovation. Remember the faculty member I had shared a room with during our first year orientation? Yeah, you guessed right, the former prison inmate. Lo and behold, James had successfully led the political battle to allow inmates from a nearby minimum security prison to attend our college during the day returning to prison each evening for lockdown. This experimental program was not only innovative, it was revolutionary. To the credit of our faculty, it was accepted with only a handful of dissenters. Frankly, I had no idea how this would impact my own music program, but I soon found out. During auditions for the jazz ensemble, the first new student to show up, tenor saxophone in tow, was Tom, a 40-ish prison release inmate. Tom was excited to be allowed to play music again, but noticeably skeptical about what to expect from kids in a community college music program. It never occurred to me to ask Tom why he had been in prison. It didn't matter. But I did ask him about his musical background. Oh, I've been around a little, Jeff. In my younger years, I played on the road with James Brown and a few other guys you probably never heard of. You're kidding, right? No, man, I'm dead serious. Tom pulled out his sax and played a few licks for me. After I got up off the floor, I immediately invited him to play with the band. Tom played it all, from old-style jazz to new-style funk. His tone could be anything from mellifluous to raunchy, depending on the tune. My first thought was that Tom could be out playing with any top-notch professional group, but circumstances prevented that, so his participation in the college ensemble would have to suffice, at least for now. Strange as it may sound, I felt an obligation to make the group as good as it could be to give Tom the musical foundation he deserved. I knew he wouldn't settle for less, so how could I? The next one through the door was Raphael, a bassist from Brooklyn. Then came Greg, a trombonist from the Bronx. Then Alonzo, a pianist from who knows where and who cares anyway. Finally, there was Pack. Another saxophonist who, I would find out later, was also one soulful singer. Several students from last year returned, eager to play. By week's end, we added a whole host of new talent, with more kids showing up daily. I had the nuclei of several bands here. All I had to do was figure out how to utilize all their talents. 
Okay, I admit, it really wasn't all that difficult. We would end up with one heck of a big band, plus several smaller ensembles of varying musical styles to boot. But wait, there's more! Music students from surrounding high schools began showing up at our rehearsals, virtually begging to be allowed to play with the bands. How could I say no? I couldn't, and I didn't. So the big band became a community jazz ensemble, open to all. Yes, this was going to be a very interesting year. In talking about it now, I confess that the next five years are as one in my memory. I can't be sure what happened when and in what order, but the chronology doesn't matter. All that matters is the recollection of the overall results of our combined efforts of teaching and learning. Rehearsals progressed quickly and well. The inmate release program provided some great talent, but some equally great challenges. For example, Raphael played the upright bass with a level of professionalism unheard in the college environment. Unfortunately, though, the prison administration refused to allow him to bring his bass to school. How was he supposed to rehearse with the jazz ensemble without his instrument? I demanded with little patience for their answer. Ultimately, two weeks later, they agreed to let Raphael schlep his bass on the prison bus to and from college every day, given assurance from me that it was indeed necessary. A few weeks later, Raphael stopped showing up for rehearsals. It seems he had been conducting a profitable little business on the side while at school, hiding a rather large stash of Mary Jane inside the equally large hollow body of his upright base on a daily basis, then selling the dope to other inmates who were not lucky enough to be allowed prison release. Raphael had built quite a thriving little enterprise, but all good things must come to an end, as his did, and he was put into lockdown. We never saw Raphael again. From our perspective, we needed to replace him with another bassist. While we missed Raphael's musicianship and outgoing personality, we may do with minimal interruption given the talent we had waiting in the wings. As for Greg, the trombonist, I had already started writing some Latin charts to take advantage of his professional experiences and ethnic performance skills. Greg was so excited to be playing in the band he could barely contain himself. Every solo he took was like a physical release from bondage and I never saw him without a smile on his face. Then one week, he was allowed a three-day furlough to visit his family in the Bronx. He never returned. The phone call from the prison informed me that Greg had been killed in a gang shootout. What a tragic waste of a life so filled with potential. Alonzo hadn't played piano for quite a while, but he showed up every day to practice his craft for hours on end, and before long, he started to regain his former keyboard proficiency. The college's Fender Rhodes electric piano became his chosen instrument, and he took to it like a fish to water. Alonzo played in a nice straight-ahead jazz style, providing the ideal foundation for the rhythm section, as well as the soloists who were comfortable improvising over his harmonic accompaniments. Like Tom, Alonzo stayed on the straight and narrow path, both having made up their minds to reclaim their lives given the opportunity to rejoin society. Pack had recently been issued parole from prison, so he was free to come and go with minimal restrictions. He shared a motel room locally with a girlfriend, which I suspect was a no-no, but far be it from me to report him. He started out strong, but fell back into some bad habits toward the end of the year. The last I heard, he had returned to prison. Despite all the personal tragedy of prison lives lost or wasted, we were nonetheless able to create some wonderful music and personal relationships that will last in our memories forever. <laughs>